When I first saw the Tesla Model X, I thought three things. The Falcon doors are awesome, it looks kind of like a beluga whale, and oh my god, is this thing fast. Having seen a bunch on the road and now having reviewed it, all three hold true. Although, the looks are growing on me a little bit. This is Tesla's first and only SUV. It's available in a five-seater, six-seater, and seven-seater configuration. This is the fully loaded seven seater, which removes some of the rear cargo space, although the rear seats can fold down. In the six seat layout, you've got the middle seat in the second row missing. It makes it kind of look like a minivan in the interior. It gives you easier access to the third row and makes it a little bit less cluttered. One thing I noticed is, due to the Falcon doors, which have windows in the actual roof of the doors, you actually have a really good amount of headroom when you're in the left or the right seat. The problem is you don't have that same window when you're in the middle seat. So unless you're five foot one, you don't wanna be in that seat whatsoever. The rear, well, it doesn't really look like it's meant for humans at all, but perhaps your kids or extra storage space. The Model X is very expensive. The one you can buy now is the P100D. This is the P90D. The 100D is just a little bit faster. Starts at $135,000. That's 17 grand more than a Cayenne Turbo, $11,000 more than a Mercedes GLS 63. However, it is $95,000 cheaper than a Bentley Bentayga, which has similar performance. However, in the quarter mile and zero to 60, the Model X is actually a bit faster. That being said, the Bentayga wins in terms of exterior and interior styling as well as luxury, but this is all electric and that one is not. The Model X has a range of up to 289 miles. The D stands for dual motor, one in the front and one in the rear. The 90 is the size of the battery, 90 kilowatt hour. This P90D was fitted with an optional upgrade called ludicrous mode. When you put it into ludicrous mode, well, that's pretty much the best way to describe it. Zero to 60 happens, and this is a big SUV in 3.2 seconds. Watch this. Oh! Now, having read a bunch of comments and recent reviews, it seems as though people think I'm exaggerating the acceleration, throwing myself back into the seat harder than is true. I have no reason to do that, and in fact, it doesn't make any sense because then if I were to review a really fast car, what would the difference be? The instant torque available at any RPM in this electric vehicle is unbelievable. And when you mash the throttle, you actually can't keep your head forward. I came up with a little game in the Tesla Model X P90D. It's actually a workout. If you're able to fully floor the car while not touching the steering wheel and keeping your body off of the seat, it provides an excellent ab workout. Let's go ahead and try that. <laughs> you actually feel it intensely in your core. Now, if you put your hands on the bottom of the steering wheel and you try to hold yourself forward with your arms, you get a little ab workout on the top of the steering wheel, shoulders, and at nine and three, you get a little bit of a tricep workout. Is that relevant? Not really, but it's kind of fun. Well, the Model X weighs a good 700 pounds heavier than the Model S, because the center of gravity is so low, it still handles really well. You've got an adjustable ride height from very high to very low, and I'm pretty impressed with how the Model X corners. It feels much less like an SUV than it does a large sedan. Now, the Model X has a lot of pioneering features that nobody else has, or it's the best in its class. For instance, this is the largest production windshield currently available. It's absolutely massive. Instead of ending about here, it goes all the way above your head. It provides a surreal view of the road. It's one of the coolest experiences and coolest parts of the Model X. There are some problems, however. While it is tinted up here, if there is too bright of sun beaming into you, you roast like a pig and you're going to get sunburned. These visors here are, well, a little bit of a joke. They barely provide any sunshade whatsoever. Apparently, Tesla offered 
an additional sunshade to customers of the Model X, but it was a little bit of an afterthought. Still though, I love the way this thing looks. The interior is very much like the Model S. Nice material choice. We've got this beautiful wood grain and this white leather. The seats are very comfortable. It's a nice interior. The screen is massive, but it doesn't blow me away. For a $150,000 car as spec, if you compare it to a Cayenne Turbo S, or I guess if you raise it in price, a Bentley Bentayga, it just is nowhere near as refined. Or let's say a Range Rover Autobiography long wheelbase. But of course, none of those are electric and none of them can throw you back into the seat like this thing can. Whew, that is unbelievably fast. An option on your new Tesla Model X is fully autonomous driving capability. You can pay $3,000 to allow this car to do everything. You can actually type in an address and the car will drive itself all the way, navigating through traffic, doing roundabout stop signs, stop lights, watching out for bikers, changing lanes on the freeway, exiting the freeway, all without you doing anything. There's one catch currently, while it has the capability to do so, regulations don't allow you to drive a fully autonomous vehicle on the road. Tesla says they're not quite sure when all of the technology is going to be able to be used. However, it's a quick software update and all of a sudden you can drive this thing. Well, no, you're not driving it. You're just sitting in the car. But we do have advanced autopilot. Double click the cruise control towards you and the car is steering itself for you. It actually just reduced its speed because it sensed that it was a 25 mile per hour zone and it slowed me down to 30. I believe it's capable of only going five miles an hour over the speed limit. If I try to raise it, which I'm doing now, it says auto steer restricted to 30 miles an hour because we are in a speed limit of 25. That is a level of your car telling you what to do that has not really been experienced before by consumers. The auto steer functionality in the Tesla Model X and Model S is better than anything else on the market. While Mercedes has a good system, it seems like it bounces between the lanes too much before it finally almost throws you off the road. This, it's able to see both lines. It even shows me right here a projection of what the road looks like ahead. If, if there's a curve in the road, I can actually see that on my display here. It shows the Model X with two blue lines, letting me know that it's able to sense both lanes. If you put your turn signals on, it scans the road on the side that you're planning on turning and can actually turn the car and place it into the lane without you having to do anything. I could almost do this review entirely without putting my hands on the steering wheel. However, after I'd say about a minute and a half or two, I'm not positive on the exact amount of time, it does tell you to hold the steering wheel. Then you can take your hands back off again and on we go. More on the interior. Finally, a vehicle that has an awesome place for your iPhone. It has a charging dock right here to the right of me where you can plug your phone in. It supports it upright. You can change the angle of your phone via a little backboard here. And that way you can use maps on your phone like Waze if you want instead of doing it on the screen. Although the screen is so large and so easy to use on the Model X, you probably won't use your phone, but it's still nice to be able to do. Whoa. This car is driving all over the place. Like I said, the Model X comes standard with five seats. If you pay $3,000, you can get the six seat layout, which doesn't have the center seat, but it still has two in the third row. And then for an extra grand, you can get the seven seat layout. If you have a family, this is basically the ultimate family car. It is extremely expensive though, at a base price of $135,000, but you are getting a lot for the money. 0 to 60 in 3.2 seconds, the quarter mile in 11.7. That's as fast as a Ferrari 430, and a 430 only seats two people. All right, we're going up on a curvy road. Let's see if this can handle it. I am really nervous right now. Ah, 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 it's doing it. Whoa, this is scary. Okay, so the Model X can drive itself on curvy back roads, although you might have a heart attack until you get used to this. Oh my God. I really don't like this. Whoa. Oh, oh, yep, it crossed the line. Okay, so it is not foolproof, but it is better than anything else on the road. The line was a little bit fading away uh, because, well, all Michigan roads suck, but still, it should have kept me in the lane. Elon Musk is all about little hidden jokes. For instance, originally, he wanted to call the Model 3 
the Model E. That way they would have the Model S, the Model E, and the Model X, which spells sex. Ha 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 ha. One thing I do like though is the volume. Normally, I don't know, it goes to 40 or something like that. Well, this one doesn't go to 10, it goes all the way up to 11. So for those of you who have seen Spinal Tap, that's actually a cool little touch. Of course, one of the most unique features of the Model X is the Falcon doors. I've actually delayed the production of this car as well as the production of the Model 3. What is cool though is because the Falcon doors are hinged, they're able to be opened with just a foot of room on either side of the doors. This makes it very easy for kids to get in and out of. You also can get in from the front of the doors or the back of the doors because they're not opening to the side. You can even open the doors via a double click on the key fob. The left side opens the left side falcon door and the right side opens the right side. Double clicking on the front of the key opens up the front trunk. Yes, we have a frunk even though this isn't a mid-engine supercar because there is no gasoline motor. Tons of storage space up there, tons of space back there if you fold down the seats and even more if you just got a five seat layout. That's probably what I would do. So what is it actually like to drive the Tesla Model X? Well, you do feel pretty high off the ground, but you've got such enormous visibility thanks to this massive front windshield. Right here, you can see my speed along with the speed limit, as well as what the road looks like ahead with a little indication of the Model X back and forth the road. We've got a series of controls here where we can go in and change the suspension settings from standard low, very low, very high, we can change the driving modes, although I don't know why you would want to drive in anything other than ludicrous, but let's try putting it in comfort. The steering loosens up quite a bit. Wow. If you want to put regenerative braking on low, you can. Basically, regenerative braking is recouping electricity to charge the batteries further, but it slows the car down rather quickly. So if you're not used to that, it can be a little bit disconcerting, but it is really nice and you can almost not have to use the brakes in many cases, the car can completely slow itself down to a stop without having to touch the brakes, just using brake regen. Let's double click the lever here to activate auto steer. It senses that there is a 35 mile an hour speed limit, so it's not allowing me to go over 40. Even if I do that, it won't let me. It's able to keep between the lanes very, very well, and it actually lasts for a long time. You don't have to put your hands on the steering wheel every 10 seconds. However, there is a limit to the time you can have your hands off the wheel. So every once in a while, it does remind you and you have to touch the wheel for a little bit. One thing that I don't like about the auto steer system is that while it's really good, if you want to intervene, you can't help it at all. The second you start moving the steering wheel, even the slightest, it cancels auto steer. Whereas in something like the Mercedes S-Class or E-Class, you can guide it gently to make sure it stays in the lanes. I guess that's probably for legal reasons so that people don't say that you crashed the Model X while using auto steer. But in reality, you are the one who messed up. Let's go ahead and slam the gas. Oh, wow. Yeah, the acceleration in this car with ludicrous mode activated is unbelievable. Let's slam the gas again. Oh my God, phenomenal. Things I don't like about the Model X. I'm not a massive fan of the way the exterior looks. The front is better than if it had the penguin shaped black nose, but it's not exactly super attractive. I think the Range Rover Autobiography is a brilliant looking SUV. So is the Cayenne Turbo S, the GLS 63, a G63, or the Bentley Bentayga. So in terms of looks, it doesn't really win in that category. Although I feel like the people buying a Model X are not really cross shopping it with those other cars. They buy it because they like all the technology and the gadgets behind it. They like what Elon Musk stands for, which is innovation and creating a green car company that's actually cool and fun to drive. And they like the fact that it can absolutely snap your neck with the brutal acceleration. One thing I do strongly dislike about the Model X and the Model S 
is its isolation from the outside environment is very, very poor. In these higher-end sedans and SUVs, typically it's very quiet in the inside. They have thicker glass, more insulation, which adds weight, but that's part of the luxurious driving experience. In this, I'm not sure if it's due to the massive windshield or just not the same build quality that you get in the Mercedes or the Porsche, but it's so much louder. You hear every little bump with the tires and wind noise. And if it's windy outside, you feel almost like you're outside. So that I don't like. But those are really the only shortcomings of the Model X. I've really enjoyed driving it. Special thanks to Corporate Auto for letting me review this car. Make sure to check them out. It's available there now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video.